Recently, I did a video on app images and why you might want to use them. So I thought, why not go and do the same thing, but this time for snaps. Now, for the sake of this video, we're going to say the implementation of a snap package and an app image are roughly the same. Now, they're both containerized ways to install applications that include all the dependencies in one little thing so you can distribute it basically to any distro that has the tools available for it without having to worry about what dependencies exist in the standard repos. So basically, it's a package that just works on every distro regardless of what you're actually running. So in that respect, they achieve basically the same job. But the reason why you might want to use one over the other isn't because of how basically the developers package them. It's because of the tooling that exists around them for the users and also the politics that exist as well. Because for some reason, snap packages are one of the most controversial ways to do universal packaging on Linux. Going so far as some distros like Linux Mint simply just dropping support for them altogether. But I'll talk more about that towards the end of the video. So before we get into that, why might you actually want to use a snap? So one of the reasons is that it's one format for every single distro. So it's not like you have an Arch Linux snap, a Fedora snap, a Red Hat snap, a Debian snap, a Void snap, all of these different snaps. It's just one snap package for every single distro that has the tooling to actually run snaps. Now this is very similar to the way that an app image works. But unlike an app image where you just need a working Fuse installation, with a snap you actually need some extra snap tools to run them, but the idea still holds where you only have this one package for every single distro where the tooling exists. They also have self-contained updating. Now when you install a snap, you do install it through a snap package manager, and the package manager can tell the snaps to actually go and update themselves, but you don't have to actually do it like that. By default, at least for most snaps, they're going to be automatically updating. Now luckily Luckily, you can disable the automatic updates because automatic updates are a massive security flaw and can very, very easily break an application if, say, a developer pushes an update that wasn't tested properly and it breaks some critical feature you need. In those cases, you really, really don't want to be doing automatic updates. You want to have them be manual and luckily you can change it to do that. But if you are lazy and just want your applications to be updated all of the time without you thinking about it, then you can just leave them on automatic updates. And because these are bundled applications, they don't rely on system libraries. So this means I can run the application on a distro that doesn't have the absolute latest updates or just generally on a distro that is behind what the latest on Linux actually is. So for example, let's say I make an application with Arch Linux in mind. So Arch Linux is obviously running a newer kernel than what you find even on the latest version of Ubuntu. So if I make it with Arch Linux in mind, I might make use of some dependency that just isn't available on the newest version of Ubuntu right now. So that application wouldn't be able to run on Ubuntu unless I was to go and actually manually get the library working myself. Whereas if I was to release that as a snap or an app image, Basically, all of those dependencies get bundled into the application and it's not a problem anymore. And this is part of the reason why Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu, is also the company who's working on snaps. Because they know that a lot of their users are going to want to use these newer applications that just simply aren't going to be available on Ubuntu after a couple of updates. And because snaps are gaining a lot of traction, a lot of proprietary applications, when they get released on Linux, only get released with a snap installation, which is probably a good reason to not use that application, but sometimes you really can't avoid it. And unlike app images, snaps actually have a centralized store. So if you want to install anything, you know where those applications are going to be. You don't need to dig around the internet to actually find them. Now you're probably saying that snaps and app images sound very, very similar. And that's on purpose because they're trying to achieve the exact same job. So they're going to have many of the same benefits, but they do have some differences. Like with a snap, at least with some of them, you have the ability to switch between different branches in the application. So for example, they might have a canary branch and a release branch and a snap would let you actually easily switch between them. Obviously, it's not a thing that many people need to do, but you might need to from time to time. But there's going to be a lot of reasons to not use snaps, and these very much differ from app images. So one of them is that the tools to actually install snaps on a lot of distros are just not available in the standard repos. For example, if you want to install a snap on Arch Linux, most people are probably going to use Snapd. But it doesn't matter what you use, because everything's available in the AUR. Now this isn't a major problem, but if you're comparing it with app images, for example, you just install Fuse, which is available in the standard repos on basically everything, and then they just work. So it's a much simpler process to get app images actually set up. 
And because you're downloading applications from a centralized store, most people are probably going to be fairly trusting of just random applications that exist. But if you're going to download random applications, you need to be very cautious, even if it's coming from the Ubuntu Snap Store, because people have shown there are ways to break out of the sandboxing that Snap actually has. This was an example back from 2016 where through a flaw in X11, someone managed to actually break out of the sandboxing and do something that was fairly innocuous, but they still showed that it was very possible. And if they wanted to, they could introduce a keylogger like that. And since that point back in 2018, there has been malware found on the Ubuntu Snap Store. So even if you're downloading stuff from the Ubuntu Snap Store, don't download random applications because if flaws have existed in the past, there will be flaws in the future. And unlike app images, some snaps actually have dependencies on other snaps, which when I first saw, I thought was really weird, but it's sort of just like a big dependency thing that all of the other snaps are going to need. But it's not like app images where you download the app image, you don't need anything else, the app image just contains everything that it needs. So that is something else you do need to keep in mind. And due to the way the file system behind a snap works, they have a really bad habit of creating way too many loop devices. So this will clutter up your file system and you try to run something like LSBLK and it will just be a wall of loop devices if you have more than like two snaps installed. And you end up giving Canonical a lot of control over how software should be distributed. And this is why Linux Mint does not like snaps as they describe in this blog here. As they say, as you install apt updates, so if you don't know, Linux Mint is an Ubuntu based distro. Snap becomes a requirement for you to continue to use Chromium and installs itself behind your back. This breaks one of the major worries people had when Snap was announced and a promise from its developers that it would never replace apt. A self-installing Snap Store which overwrites part of our apt package base is a complete no-no. It's something we have to stop and it could mean the end of Chromium updates and access to the Snap Store in Linux Mint. And this was from last year before anything had actually gone really bad. And then a year later, in Ubuntu 2004, the Chromium package is indeed empty and acting without your consent, basically as a backdoor to the Ubuntu store. Now, I don't know if that's a fair assessment, but that's the way they want to describe it themselves. So these applications cannot be patched or pinned. You can't audit them, hold them, modify them, or even point Snap to a different store. You have as much empowerment with this as you have when you're using proprietary software, i.e. none. This is in effect similar to a commercial proprietary solution, but with two major differences. It runs as root and it installs itself without asking you. So that's the reason why Mint doesn't like them. And I think that's a fairly fair assessment from someone running an Ubuntu based distro. Now, whether you want to run snaps or not is going to be entirely up to you. Personally, I cannot stand them. And it's for just one of the reasons. Just one of them. It's because of the loopback devices. It makes managing your file system a massive pain. I don't know why the loop devices need to be there. Just use something else that doesn't ruin my file system. Like, you know, Fuse, like app images do. That's why I use app images when I need to use something that I need to install that can't be installed through my package manager or through the AUR. Generally though, most of the stuff that I want to install can be installed through one of those package repositories. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I'd like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Kulbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan Monster, Joseph, Peter D. Rode, Tony Donald, John, Merrick McKell, Nephite, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there'll be some links down below to my Subscribestar, Cointree, and Patreon, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available on Library and YouTube for the video version and the audio version available basically anywhere you can listen to audio podcasts. I've also got this channel available on Library, Bitchute, and Bitchute if you don't want to watch it on YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.